Hello friends, welcome to another Take Better Photos channel video. Following the video on On One Masking Brush Tips, this time we're going to be looking at a tool which is just as important and if you are a beginner, you probably aren't getting the most out of. And that is what On One calls the Quick Mask AI Brush. We're going to be running through four tips to get you using Quick Mask AI the right way. So let's get right into it. Before we go on to the tips, let's run through the basics of the Quick Mask AI brush and how it works. Let's demonstrate the basics with this image. To use it, you must first create a local adjustment. Second, select the tool. Make sure to choose the correct tool, Quick Mask AI brush, and not the similarly named Quick Mask Brush. As mentioned in a previous video, I find this a confusing naming scheme, which on one should rectify in future versions. Next, make the selection. As you move around the photo, Photo Raw will display various regions in your photo as red overlays. Clicking on a region will create a selection and change the overlay of that area from red to blue. If there are additional regions you wish to select, hover over those and click. To remove a selection, click on it a second time. By the way, you may have noticed while Quick Mask AI has brush in its name, it does not actually behave like a brush. Rather, it uses a point and click mechanism, which is a good reason to change the name of this tool. I suggest Object Select, which would better reflect what this tool actually does. Once you're done with your selection, click the check mark. As you can see, this creates the mask. The Quick Mask AI option bar has two options, paint or erase. The behavior of this is a little bit confusing, so let me explain. If you've used other masking tools, you might have assumed that clicking on paint changes the selection mode to select while clicking on Erase changes the mode to Deselect. If that is the assumption, it actually is not the case. Clicking Paint or Erase has no effect during the selection process. Clicking Paint or Erase only takes effect once the check mark is clicked. Let's demonstrate. First, with the Paint option selected, I'll click on the check mark. As you can see, because I've set the option to paint, the mask is created in a way where any adjustment will be applied to the selection. The selected region is white, while the unselected region is black. Next, let's see the behavior when a race is selected. I'll click the check mark. In this case, the mask is inverted. The adjustment will affect those areas which are not selected. As you can see, the selected region is black and the unselected region is white. So that is the behavior of Quick Mask AI. Let's move on to the tips. The first tip is to apply the Quick Mask AI tool first before any other tool. Unlike other masking tools, Quick Mask AI differs in that activating this tool resets any previously created mask. Let's demonstrate with this image. I'll create a local adjustment. I'll show the mask. At this point, nothing is selected. Unselected regions is indicated by a red overlay. I'll use the masking brush to select the subject. There, the selection is done. As you can see, a mask is created. Let's say I want to use the Quick Mask AI tool to add to this mask. Is that possible? I'll use the shortcut to activate Quick Mask AI, and you can do that by pressing W on the keyboard. Unfortunately, the answer is no. As you can see here, the mask has been reset. 
the entire image once again appears unselected in red. Note that when I select a new object, this will be done on a new mask. The previous mask is gone, which demonstrates the behavior that activating Quick Mask AI will reset any previous selections. Therefore, the only way to use Quick Mask AI is to use it first before any other masking tool. So that is the first tip. Let's move on to the second. The second tip is to use the Refine Brush to perfect a selection. You may have noticed if you've tried Quick Mask AI for any amount of time that it has one flaw and that is lack of precision. You can see this clearly when an object contains fine detail such as in hair or foliage. While more precise masking would be preferred, at least on one does not leave its users out in the cold. It addresses the problem with a separate tool, the refined brush. To demonstrate, let's use this image. Let's try to mask the person. As expected, Quick Mask was not able to take into account the intricate details of the hair in its selection. No problem, I'll choose Refine Brush. With the method set to hair slash branches, I'll brush over the edges of the hair. If the refinement is not satisfactory, you can try to change the mode to see if it gives better results. There, a pretty good selection. Refine Brush also works great for trees and foliage. Once again, let's make a quick mask selection. Again, a pretty unusable result. Let's use Refine Brush. There, another sophisticated selection. So as you can see, the Refine Brush is an indispensable companion to Quick Mask AI. Make sure to use it. Let's move on to the next tip. The third tip is to be aware of masking interoperability. One thing nice about Quick Mask AI is it does not work in isolation. You can refine a mask with other masking tools to help you form that perfect mask. To demonstrate, let's mask the foreground in this image. As recommended in tip one, I'll start off with Quick Mask AI. Next, I'll add on to the mask by including the tree. Let's assume Quick Mask AI does not do a great job on the tree. No problem, let's use the masking brush. As you can see, the masking brush works great to help augment the mask produced by Quick Mask AI. But that's not all. You can augment the mask with a second tool, the line mask. Let's use that. So as you can see, Quick Mask AI works great with two other powerful masking tools that can be used to solve any type of masking difficulty. One tool though that doesn't work as well is the Linear Gradient tool. Strangely, Linear Gradient will not allow you to add to the mask, only subtract from it, as you can see here. This is an inconsistent behavior with the rest of the tools, and I hope this is rectified in the future. The fourth tip is the ability to create cutouts with Quick Mask AI. As you've seen, Quick Mask AI is great for making precise local adjustments, but it can do more than that. You might not know that it is also a great tool for making cutouts, a la Photoshop. Let's demonstrate. First, it's important to make sure no adjustment layer has been created. Next, make the selection. Click the check mark. And just like that, you get a great cutout. You can even add your own background. Another nice thing about Quick Mask 
because it allows for making precise selections. Cutouts can be made even if it includes complex hair, as you can see here. So there you have it, four quick mask AI brush tool tips. I hope you found this video helpful. If you are a beginner, I bet you weren't aware of quick mask AI's capabilities. Hopefully, now you know On One has provided all you need to create perfect masks with quick mask AI. Let me know if you know of any other tips. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next time, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.